Hello hackers, welcome back to Pwn College. I'm Jan and today we're pushing on on the causes of corruption style memory errors. Um, we talked in the last video about classic buffer overflows. In this video, we'll start with sinus mixups and see how far we go. All right, as we saw in the um, previous example with the classic buffer overflow, it was really just a case of uh, small buffer, large uh, read um, from, from user input. That's a simple mistake to make. So let's say you're a developer that wants to um, actually make something uh, secure. You might create uh, a, a program that makes a check that has a size. You read in the size um, of the user input from the user. Then you actually check if the size is, is too big. Exit if it's too big, otherwise you um, read uh, the um, input of that size. Uh, so how can this be wrong? Well, this is wrong for a very subtle reason. The subtle reason is that the standard C library uses unsigned integers to specify size. Uh, size. So the argument of read, uh, memcomp, sterncomp, the, the size arguments of all of these and a lot of others are specified as a pseudotype called, if we look up the uh, man page, called size t. Size t is an unsigned um, integer. But the default integer types, short, int, long, etc., are signed. And this causes problems. Why does it cause problems? Well, recall two's complement. In two's complement, and if you don't remember what two's complement is or don't immediately um, see the implications in your mind, I would go back and rewatch the assembly fundamental lecture in uh, Pwn College. Um, but two's complement basically encodes uh, signed and unsigned variables in um, almost the same way, right? Um, and it really just depends on how you are using these um, variables to, um, or these values, whether you're using them in a signed or unsigned way, but the actual storage is uh, fairly the same. So zero, one, two, et cetera, positive numbers in two's complement up until some um, limit are the same between signed and unsigned uh, interpretations. But where things start getting dicey is um, in the negative numbers. So a negative one stored in two's complement is equal to whatever the maximum, uh, so if you have a 32 bit, uh, bit integer, it's equal to two to the 32 minus one. And that is this OX FFFFFFF. Two to the 32 minus two, this FFFFE is negative two and so on. So two's complement is um, basically uh, a way to overlap the very highest value numbers unsigned with negative numbers in the signed world. Um, and the signedness of um, these numbers only really mostly matters during conditional jumps. Um, let me give you an example. In, in, in this specific case, we're checking if a size is greater than 16. And if it's greater than 16, um, this uh, in assembly, this will cause some sort of a jump to happen to go to exit, right? Um, this is what that jump might look like. It might comp EAX and 16. And if you recall comp, uh, does a subtraction then sets a bunch of flags, right? And then the conditional jumps check these flags to decide whether that jump should be taken or not. Uh, the flags that are checked determine whether the, the um, jump cares about the sign or doesn't care about the sign. And this is their different instructions that care about the sign versus not. And JAE jump above or equal or sorry, this actually should just be jump above because it's just checking if it's greater than, um, but you get the idea. Um, cares about the, uh, does not care about the sign. Above means an unsigned greater than. That's how they call unsigned greater than is above. Um, it's an unsigned comparison. This means that if EAX is um, hex FFFFFF, the comparison that, uh, the, the condition that um, this this uh, jump will be predicated on is essentially that FFFFF is greater than 16 and it's not, uh, it is, right? And it will take that jump, right? That's a very large number, that jump will be taken. On the other hand, 
if the jump used is JGE, jump of greater than or equal to, that is a signed version of JAE. That checks different flags that are set by comp. Comp still sets the same flags. It doesn't matter if that data is signed or unsigned. But JGE will um, check different uh, parts of, 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 of the flags that are set. And uh, a comparison of FFFFFF and 16 will result in, semantically speaking, checking if negative one is greater than 16. Negative one is not greater than 16. That jump will not be taken. And so this exit will not occur, even though the size that is passed into read is FFFFFF, which is very, very large. All right, let's um, see which one is used in this code and the implication of that to the security of this program. So I uh, wrote that um, um, example in a um, signness.c here. Um, fairly straightforward, uh, as, as you remember. So let's compile it. And again, I'm going to use no stack protector. Um, and we'll talk about what this means and, and so forth. And then um, uh, dash O signedness, signedness.c. So we'll, we'll talk about this flag uh, in a later lecture in this module. For now, let's just uh, bear with it. So we execute signedness. It asks, of course, it reads in the size. And then um, if we just S trace it, we see that if I read in 10, then it'll read in 10 uh, from my input, right? If I, if I, if I provide 10 uh, as my size, it'll read 10. If I provide something bigger than 10, it exits with an exit code of one. So how can we fool this? Well, of course, as I've been saying, we just give it OX FFFFFFF. Um, I can, of course, type that out. I can't do OX blah, blah, blah. I don't, I'm not actually sure about that, but I can always put negative one. This actually will write OX FFFFFF into my signed size because it's an int, uh, signed int. And this doesn't always work. It, uh, gigantic reads. So what we're doing is we're doing a read of OX FFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFF
by disassembling this binary. And if we go up to where main is and we see the comparison and the resulting, so here's the call to exit. Here is JLE, it's the actually uh, jump of less than or equal to. So it compares EAX against 16 and it does a jump of less than or equal to a signed comparison. And EAX in a signed comparison is treated as negative one or OX FFFF when we enter negative one. But when it's passed on to read later um, in, in its um, uh, third argument, it is OXFF, which is treated as a very, very large number. Cool. So um, here um, things things run as expected and, and uh, crash. But of course, as we discussed last video, there's padding and stuff. So it might be more than you expect um, input bytes is necessary to crash. In GDB, things are not so nice. Um, in GDB, if I run, it, and, and you'll need to know this for the homework. That's why I'm uh, going into this. If I run and I say negative one, it just exits. Why? Right? Obviously, uh, signedness checks aren't different in GDB. And it exited uh, normally instead of exiting with an error code, with error code one. Um, let me show you what happens if I, for example, a, a thousand, it'll exit with error code one. So it exited with error code zero. What happens in GDB is some craziness in, uh, that I've never actually managed to track down causes very large reads and a read with OX FFFF is a very large read to fail. So it just fails and then, um, happily goes on with its day. Um, I think it'll be the same in S trace. Um, if I do negative one, nope, and S trace, it still works, right? So you can see the gigantic number that is two to the 32 minus one that we um, tried to read. Anyways, um, and if I S trace, oh, and then every once in a while, depending on memory um, alignment, I think it does fail. So this is very, very annoying. That failed again. Uh, maybe it actually fails. Oh, that succeeded. Eh. Boom, and now we, we of course, sec fault. Um, I wonder if it'll succeed in GDB sometimes. Uh, we're not getting lucky if it does. Anyways, how to fix this in GDB? Well, uh, don't forget you're in a debugger, you control the program completely. I wrote a um, simple GDB script that breaks at read, simply sets at, and this is the read libc wrapper for the system call, so there's no problem breaking there. Sets um, RDX to actually uh, mas uh, masks RDX with just OXFFF, so the maximum that RDX can be now is OXFFF. Um, I found that this is a reasonable size. If I do FFFF, that's still too big. Um, and if I run um, GDB with this shortened read, um, things work fine. All right, so I run negative one, it reads, I put in my A's, program crashed. Let's see what's at the, let's see where we crashed. Okay. And let's see what's at the top of the stack. So we crashed at the red and we were about to return to this 41414141. We overwrote the return address, even though on the face of it, from a glance, this program seemed pretty secure. Um, I'm going to mention one more um, cause of, of a very similar sort of, of issue um, without going too far in depth. Um, and that cause is integer overflows. Um, integer overflows uh, are, are kind of similar to sinus uh, in, in the fact, in the sense that if you have a negative one and you add one to it, you have a zero. In the same way, negative one is equivalent to the highest number of XFFFF that a 32 bit integer can store. Um, and uh, if you add one to it, that becomes zero. So let's see what happens in the context of this program. This program uses a new function that you might not have seen before called alloc a. alloc a simply allocates 
um, space on the stack it is it, for uh, dynamically sized space so if you do man alloc a you can see it, you just pass it a size um, and this size is unsigned by the way similar to the previous one so there could be sign this mixups here as well but in this specific case the problem is an over uh, an integer overflow um, and if you look at what happens here this program tries to null terminate the input so what it does is it um, uh, reads the size from the user. It allocates size plus one on the stack and it reads in size bytes from the user. And then right at the end, whatever the user put in, it null terminates. This is a very common pattern to read in a string and null terminate it, right? But in this case, this size plus one has problems. So consider int is a, is, is a 32 bit integer. What's the maximum value that this integer can take? Of course, the maximum value is um, 2 to the 32 minus 1. OX, FF, 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 FF. Four bytes, all ones. And what happens when you increment that is it rolls back around to 0. This is called an integer overflow. The same way, if you have a 0 and you subtract 1 to it, you get OXFFFFF. This is actually how 2's complement works. When you interpret these as signed numbers, this makes absolute sense. right? This is the beauty of 2's complement, that it uses integer overflows um, intelligently. But this causes a problem for us in the security realm in this case, because if I enter negative 1 here, and, I, and, and this um, does size plus 1, this alloc A will allocate the zero bytes. And then I will read OXFFFFFFFFF bytes onto the stack. And of course, everything will explode, which is awesome to see. And this is a problem despite any, there's no sign this mix up or anything. Everything is unsigned. This is properly an unsigned int size. It's the same as size T. Um, so let's take a look at um, what happens in practice. Um, I created another, uh, wrote this into another program in overflow. Let's compile that. All right. And I launch it and it tells me, of course, it waits for the size. I put in negative one, then I put in a bunch of A's and it crashed. All right, same sort of thing with GDB. I, of course, have to shorten that read. Do the int overflow. I run it, put in a negative one, put in a bunch of A's. Uh, oops, uh, let's see what instruction we're at. Ah, see, I put in, I think, too many A's and it actually crashed at the null termination which is interesting. Um, let's run it again. Negative one, and I'll put in fewer A's. Oh, same address for the crash. Put in even fewer A's. Oh, what's going on? Put in even fewer A's. Why is it crap? Oh, <laughs> do you see where it's crashing? It is crashing here because we are writing um, something. Uh, we are writing this zero here. And this zero is based on the address of the buffer plus the amount of bytes we read. So we apparently overwrote where, whatever uh, local stack variable was holding the address of the buffer and crashed. But as you can see, we have a buffer overflow where according to the code, just glancing at the code, there shouldn't be one, right? But there is one because of an integer overflow. Cool. Um, I think there's one more that I want to talk about very similar. I'll just mention it briefly off by one errors. Um, consider uh, the following. Consider that we index array starting at zero. And oftentimes 
due to whatever miscalculation or just an error like using a less than or equal to instead of a less than, we will access the end of the array, what we think is the end of the array, but it'll actually be one after that. So if you have um, uh, an array with three elements, one, two, and three, and you access array uh, indexed three, that is the fourth element of the array. That is technically an off by one error. And these off by one errors can cause small overflows. And these small overflows can be problematic as well, as you'll, uh, as we'll talk about um, shortly, and as you'll discover in your homework. All right. Um, that's the end of this video. See you next videos.